This is a semi-automatic poultry drinker. It works on a float valve and you put it together with a reservoir and every time the chickens or the ducks empty out the water in the bowl, it refills itself from the reservoir. They're simple to put together. There's a few little tips and tricks that are worth knowing about. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to do it. Hello, welcome to English Country Life. Welcome to the yard where I'm filming today to get away from a lot of wind noise and other noise that's out in the main garden and the chicken enclosure. My name's Hugh and today I want to talk to you about float valve chicken drinkers. It really won't take long, but this is the one I'm going to use. This is called a maxi cup chicken drinker. It's a good quality one marketed by a UK firm. There are cheap ones out there and I've bought them in the past and honestly I regretted it. Their quality was so low I struggled to make them work and if I want a cheap drinker I tend to make one of a different design. I'll put a link somewhere up here that you can make for absolutely nothing. But if you want a float valve drinker and there are good reasons to think about one it's worth getting a decent drinker assembly. So now what I'm going to do very quickly is just run through, I'm going to show you how to fit one, some of the design choices, and we'll look at how it works. So this is the Maxi Cup then. It's made by a company called BEC, stands for Broiler Equipment Company, and they've been around for more than 50 years. Full instructions come on the back as does the Shropshire based address of the firm that make it. They're part of Osprey now, an injection moulding company, but it's a quality firm and it's a quality product. Let's take a look how it works. What you've got is you've got a trough here, holds up to half a litre. And on the back, you've got an inlet spigot. That that I've just turned off is a little filter if you've got contamination in the water. And then what you've got is a nut that goes onto a threaded inlet pipe and at the back of that pipe, there is also an O-ring that you use to seal the assembly. If you turn it upside down, what you can do is release a couple of grub screws. And those grub screws hold the float valve in place. What I will say is, hang on to them. They're small and they're fiddly if you do this. Put them somewhere safe. Once you've taken those two retaining screws out, you can lift off the inlet pipe. And the black assembly that you're looking at there, that's the float valve. If I turn it over, you can see there's a hole in the bottom and it rises and falls on a little flange there. And at the top, there's a little needle. And what happens, as it floats up like that, that needle will block the inlet pipe at the bottom there. So it fits snugly inside and when it's floated up on water, it lets no more water in. Simple but effective. So here's how you're actually going to fit your maxi cup to whatever reservoir you use. I'm just using a white plastic lidded bucket. What you need to do is sit the reservoir on a flat surface and then sit the maxi cup on a flat surface at the right height for your chickens and draw around the inlet pipe with the filter removed. That'll show you where to drill your hole. It's a 12 millimeter half inch hole. What you will notice though is that it is quite a way above the base of the bucket. It has to be that way to give room on the inside to attach that filter. Now, that of course gives you the thought, if you're using clean water, you don't need the filter. And there is a way then of attaching it a bit further down. If you stand your reservoir on something, I'm just using a couple of house bricks here, what you can do is put the maxi cup in at the bottom so that the support is keeping the reservoir above the maxi cup and it's not dragging on the ground. And that's what I'm going to do on this occasion. So I've marked a hole right at the base of the bucket. I'm using a 12 millimeter spade bit to drill a hole through the side of the bucket. And that's the only tools you really need to do this job. It's a very simple piece of kit to put together. With my hole in place, I'm going to take off the filter. As I say, I won't be using that on this occasion, although I'll keep it safe in case I want to use the maxi cap somewhere else. Remove the threaded nut, but what I am going to do is I'm going to leave that little O-ring behind so that it seals the water from dripping out. It will be a tight fit, but you can push the threads through into the reservoir and then take your nut 
and put it onto the inside of the pipe and just tighten it up finger tight. You don't need to take pliers to it. Once it's in place, you're done. So let's show you how it works then. Fill it up with some good clean water since we're not using the filter. And if you look at the sort of top left hand corner of the screen here, you can see the water in the trough is gradually rising. It's not a fast rise, but it's more than enough to keep up with a few chickens drinking from it. It does tell you though, I think, that if you've got a flock of 50 or 60 chickens, clearly you're going to need more than one of this type of drinker on a hot day to keep up with demand. And that's as high as the water's ever going to rise, as you can see here. The float has now risen, it's blocked the inlet pipe, and that's the level that the water's going to stay at. That's your basic setup, that's all it is. Plastic bucket, plastic anything, as a reservoir, 12 millimeter, half an inch hole, and attach your float valve drinker through that. If I was gonna go much bigger, I would certainly attach the pre-filter inside and mount it a little higher. But on a small one like this, I like to make the maximum use of the space available. Now, how big you could go? Well, as big as I would wanna carry would probably be a five gallon, 25 liter bucket, because that's gonna have 50 pounds of weight hanging on a wire handle off my hand. And honestly, much more than that kind of cuts the circulation off to your fingers. So if I wanted to go bigger still, what I would do is put it in place and then fill it in place. How big? Well, no reason at all why you couldn't fit one or probably more than one of the float valve drinkers to a rainwater butt. And if you wanted even more than that, these are IBC tanks, they hold a thousand litres. We've got five of them there, they're part of our rainwater harvesting system. And you can get blanking plates that fit on the valves at the bottom of those where there's a tap just to stop drips, etc. And you can get solid ones. This solid one, I've drilled and fitted a hose lock so that I can connect a hose directly to the taps on the bottom of the IBC tank. You could just as easily put a 12 mil hole in it and fit a float valve drinker. One other thought, if you've got runs like this and you want to water the chickens inside, what I would do is pop the float valve drinker inside, poke the spigot through the holes and attach the reservoir on the outside. That way I can refill the reservoir without having to crawl on my hands and knees inside the run. So I hope you can see they're a really flexible choice. I didn't get these free. I'm not being paid to promote it. I paid full retail price for this Maxi Cup one because I think they're a great device. I really do. I think they're flexible. I think they're useful. I hope you agree. So there we have it. That's our float valve drinker in between our free drinker and our commercial drinker. And honestly, the chickens don't care. Our chickens will quite happily drink from a muddy puddle when there's fresh water available. So build the one that's right for you, that contains enough water that you can keep clean and is the right size for your flock. If you've enjoyed today's video, can you spare us five seconds? Give us a thumbs up down below. If you'd like to see another kind of feeder that I can put together for you, just let us know in the comments, or maybe you'd rather see more on our rainwater harvesting system, which is quite large. We rainwater harvest over 20,000 litres at a time because we've got quite a big place to keep irrigated. If you'd like to know that, again, just leave us a comment or any other self-reliant, self-sufficient topic that interests you. We'll try and make those kind of videos for you. And if you'd like to see them and you haven't already subscribed to the channel, just tap on that subscribe button down there and hit the bell next to it. You'll hear every time we upload a new video. But whatever you do, come back and see us soon. Take care.